Western officials admit Ukraine is crawling with CIA personnel. The New York Times reports that Ukraine is crawling with special forces and spies from the U.S. and its allies, which would seem to contradict earlier reports that the U.S. intelligence cartel is having trouble getting intel about what's happening on the ground in Ukraine. This would also, obviously, put the final nail in the coffin of the claim that this is not a U.S. proxy war. In an article titled Commando Network Coordinates Flow of Weapons in Ukraine, Western officials inform us of the following through their stenographers at the New York Times. Quote, As Russian troops press ahead with a grinding campaign to seize eastern Ukraine, The nation's ability to resist the onslaught depends more than ever on the help from the United States and its allies, including a stealthy network of commandos and spies rushing to provide weapons, intelligence, and training, according to U.S. and European officials. Much of this work happens outside of Ukraine, at bases in Germany, France, and Britain, for example. But even as the Biden administration has declared it will not deploy American troops in Ukraine— Some CIA personnel have continued to operate in the country secretly, mostly in the capital, Kyiv, directing much of the massive amounts of intelligence the United States is sharing with Ukrainian forces, according to current and former officials. At the same time, a few dozen commandos from other NATO countries, including Britain, France, Canada, and Lithuania, also have been working inside Ukraine, end quote. The revelation that the CIA and U.S. Special Forces are conducting military operations in Ukraine does indeed make a lie of the Biden administration's insistence at the start of the war that there would be no American boots on the ground in Ukraine. And the admission that NATO powers are so involved in operations against a nuclear superpower means we are closer to seeing a nuclear exchange than anyone should be comfortable with. This news should surprise no one who knows anything about the usual behavior of the U.S. intelligence cartel, but interestingly, it contradicts something we were told by the same New York Times not three weeks ago. American intelligence agencies have less information than they would like about Ukraine's operations and possess a far better picture of Russia's military, its planned operations and successes and failures, New York Times told us earlier this month. U.S. officials said the Ukrainian government gave them few classified briefings or details about their operational plans, and Ukrainian officials acknowledged that they did not tell the Americans everything. It seems a bit unlikely that U.S. intelligence agencies would have a hard time getting information about what's happening in a country where they themselves are physically located. Moon of Alabama theorized at the time that this ridiculous we-don't-know-what's-happening-in-our-own-proxy-war line was being pushed to give the U.S. plausible deniability about Ukraine's failures on the battlefield, which have only gotten worse since then. So why are they telling us all this now? Well, it could be that we're being paced into accepting an increasingly active role of the U.S. and its allies in Ukraine. The other day, anti-war's Daniel Larison tweeted, Hawks in April. Don't call it a proxy war, Hawks in May. Of course it's a proxy war, Hawks in June. It's not their war, it's our war. This is indeed exactly how it happened. Back in April, President Biden told the press the idea that this is a proxy war between the U.S. and Russia was not true. And Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said it's not. This is clearly Ukraine's fight when asked if this is a proxy war. The mainstream media were still framing this claim as merely an accusation by the Russian government, and empire spinmeisters were regularly admonishing anyone who used that term on the grounds that it deprives Ukrainians of their agency. Then May rolled around, and all of a sudden we had the New Yorker unequivocally telling us that the U.S. is in a full proxy war with Russia, and hawks like U.S. Congressman Seth Moulton saying things like, We're not just at war to support the Ukrainians, we're fundamentally at war, although somewhat through a proxy with Russia, and it's important that we win. And now here in June, we've got war hawks like Max Boot coming right out and saying that this is actually America's war, and it is therefore important for the U.S. to drastically escalate the war in order to hand the Russians devastating losses. 
So the previously unthinkable idea that the U.S. is at war with Russia has been gradually normalized, with the heat turned up so slowly that the frog doesn't even notice it's being boiled alive. If that idea can be sufficiently normalized, public consent for greater escalations will likely be forthcoming, even if those escalations are extremely psychotic. Back in March, when I said the only agency Ukraine has in this conflict is the central intelligence kind, empire loyalists jumped down my throat. They couldn't believe I was saying something so evil and wrong. Now they've been told that the Central Intelligence Agency is indeed conducting operations and directing intelligence on the ground in Ukraine, but I somehow doubt that this will stir any self-reflection on their part.